Welcome to This Week in Astronomy, brought to you by Celestron, the world's leading manufacturer of telescopes. I'm Dave Eicher, editor of Astronomy Magazine. This time we're going to talk about something really cool, how you can hold an ancient piece of the solar system right in your hands. I'm talking about the world of meteorite collecting. Meteorites fall on down to Earth occasionally, and they're the products mostly of asteroids in a couple of instances in planets or the moon, and we'll talk about the different types of meteorites as we go through this talk. So there are basically three main types of meteorites, irons, stone meteorites, the most abundant, and stony irons uh, that represent different things from their sources. Irons represent the cores of asteroids mostly, the most dense metallic part. They're mostly iron and with a little bit of nickel and other elements. Stony meteorites are by far the most common. They represent the mantles mostly of asteroids. And then there's an unusual type called stony iron in the boundary between the core and the mantle of these bodies. And they can include some really cool, interesting minerals in that transition zone. So let's look at a few examples, if we can, from my collection, humble examples which we'll look at that will illustrate a few of the types. First of all, we have some irons. A good example is Sicotaline. It's an iron octahedrite. It fell in 1940 in far eastern Russia. Another interesting iron is Canyon Diablo. It's an iron octahedrite from Coconino County, Arizona. It fell about 50,000 years ago, and amazingly, it's a piece of the meteorite that formed Meteor Crater. Gibeon is a well-known iron. It's also an octahedrite. It was found in 1836 in Namibia, and it shows great what are called Wiedmannstaaten lines, these crisscross, crystallized patterns in the iron. And this results from the iron and nickel uh, cooling very, very slowly over huge time intervals. Gibeon is also very, very dense, and so it's easy to cut and is often used for jewelry, things like watch faces, and other things like that. Then we get to the most abundant category by far of meteorites, and these are the stones. One great example that's exotic is Allende. It's a stone, a carbonaceous chondrite from the distant solar system, very primitive stuff. It fell in Chihuahua, Mexico in 1969. It contains really unusual inclusions that are called calcium aluminum inclusions, these white spots. They're about 30 million years older than Earth. They represent the crystallized primitive droplets of material in the early solar system system. Another great stone example is Cameldonga. It's a stone achondrite. It's a calcium-rich eucrite. It was found in 1984 in Western Australia, and it's famous for its very black fusion crust. Dofar 7 is an interesting stone meteorite. It's also an achondrite, a eucrite. It was found in Oman. It's actually known to be a piece of the asteroid Vesta. The parent bodies of meteorites are very complex to try to figure out, but the spectrum here uh, leads us to know that Vesta, one of the largest asteroids, is the parent of this meteorite. NWA 1869 is another good stone. It's a so-called brecciated chondrite. You can see in its sliced composition here that it's a whole bunch of stuff that is mixed up and crystallized, and that's what brecciated means. It was found in 1999 in Algeria. And a final stone example is Park Forest, which very famously fell in 2003 near Chicago, Illinois. It's an ordinary chondrite and just a beautiful object. Then we get to things that are a little more exotic, the so-called stony irons. I have two examples of stony irons here that are both so-called palisites. The first is Brahim that was found in 1810 in Belarus, and it shows very good examples of the inclusions of this mineral forsterite, a yellow-green mineral. It's also called olivine 
or peridot uh, by jewelers. And it uh, is a beautiful mineral that looks like a window in these sliced pieces of meteorites. Escal is another great example of a stony iron. It's also a palisite. It was found in 1951 in Argentina, and it's often thought to be the most beautiful of the palisites. Then we have two examples of the most exotic kinds of meteorites. Daralgani 400 is a stone achondrite, a lunar. It was found in 1998 in Libya, and it's known to be a piece of the largest lunar meteorite ever to fall to Earth. Even more exotic is Zagami, a stone achondrite. It's a so-called shergatite. It fell in 1962 in Nigeria. It's a crystallized piece of Martian basalt. It's known to be from the largest Martian meteorite ever to fall on Earth, the most exotic thing we have as a rock on Earth, a piece of the planet Mars. So get into this, enjoy uh, meteorite collecting. You can check online dealers. You can go to the Tucson Gem Show every year in February in Tucson. It's an amazing way to get into the hobby and hold ancient pieces of the solar system in your hand. I'll see you next time.